Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the, uh, the legal fraternity, charming ladies, handsome gentlemen, beautiful boys and girls. We have two eminent personalities also on the uh, Zoom call there, we're also going to address. Now, as we begin, uh, can I ask uh, Mr. Tiriwingaram to please raise and uh, make sure that the uh, invitees are uh, presented with a welcome bouquet of flowers. Uh, request uh, Manik to please welcome uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Arvind Kumar. Thank you, Manik. May I request uh, Ms. Ramya to welcome Honorable Mr. Justice Banurmat. May I now request Ms. Disha to welcome Honorable Justice Dinesh Kumar. May I request Dr. Aditya Armugam to welcome Dr. Pratima Murthy. And may I welcome uh, Madam Revati Thiruvangaram to uh, welcome Sharanya is here. Okay, there, Dr. Sharanya Mohan is ready to welcome Mr. Mohandas Pai. Thank you very much. May we uh, request the, uh, the only dignitaries on the days to uh, please unveil uh, the, uh, the book release along with uh, the author, Mr. Thirivangadam. And finally, the author itself, the debut book, Making Minds Meet Conflict to Consensus by Mr. B.C. Thirvengaram. Senior advocate, thank you uh, so much. Now, uh, I think it would be nice for us to see how uh, well the autograph is going to be carried by uh, Thirvengaram on each of the uh, copies. Uh, uh, Mr. Thirvengaram, can you do the honors of? personally autographing each one of those books that have been released by the dignitaries. I think the dignitaries will be absolutely delighted to see. Uh... As the signing pro, uh, the process is on, uh, we have uh, two young, brilliant students of law. Ms. Siri Prasad and Mr. Anand Sagar who are going to read some phrases and paragraphs from the book. Siri Prasad is an LLB gold medalist, coordinator at uh, by Mac, 
and master candidate at the London School of Economics, International Employment Relations and Conflict Resolution. We have Mr. Anand Saga, project leader at Unnati Foundation, an NGO that trains underprivileged youth to help them gain employment. My welcome these two young stalwarts, please. Please read. All the best to you. Thank you. Check. Case study 42, page 129. L and M, a couple in their 80s, lived in the house they built along with their son and his family. Their son, N, and daughter-in-law, O, were bank employees, while their grandchildren, P and Q, were teenagers studying in school. L and M were both ardent readers of various newspapers every day. They enjoyed solving the crossword and Sudoku. N and O stopped subscribing to newspapers as they preferred to read news on their mobile phones. They also got rid of their television, stating that it was a distraction for their children. N got his parents a laptop to watch their favorite news and religious programs, but they found it complex to use. They preferred sending handwritten letters to emails. N and O were busy with their respective laptops or mobile phones at home, while the grandchildren were busy with their homework, tuition, music, and karate classes. L and M liked to meet their friends and relatives, but depended on their son or daughter-in-law to take them. They did not want to disturb them. The overall situation caused L and M to feel frustrated and suffocated. At times, M's frustration reflected in some remarks against her daughter-in-law. One evening, while attempting to replace a fused electric bulb, L fell and broke his hip bone. He needed surgery and physiotherapy. A couple of months after L had recovered, N told his parents that they would be better off in a home for senior citizens, as they would be better taken care of by those running the center and would have the company of several elders. L and M were deeply hurt and refused to move out of the house that they had built. At this, N and O threatened to move out, saying that it was difficult to adjust and live with them. L and M had no choice but to go to the home for the aged and did so reluctantly. On coming to know their situation, a voluntary organization complained to the Tribunal for Maintenance and Welfare of Parents and Senior Citizens Act 2007. N participated in the proceedings on receipt of a notice from the tribunal. L and M made it clear that they longed for love and affection and not maintenance. They desired to spend their last days in the house they had built and lived in for many years. After considerable discussions, N agreed to take back his parents and appoint a full-time caretaker. He also promised to spend quality time with his parents. The generation gap affects the family and the environment at workplaces, educational institutions, and social gatherings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Siri and uh, Sagar, for that rendering. Uh, the author uh, promises, Honorable Mr. Justice Sirik Joseph at Kochi, you will get your planter delivered to your place shortly. And so will uh, Dr. Basin in Delhi. The planters will reach you shortly. The author promises that, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all happy that uh, the great author is here, but we have to know something about him. Thiru, as he is fondly known to most of us, BC Thiruvangadam, is a senior advocate 
and has over four decades of standing before various high courts and the Supreme Court. He's a well-known dispute resolution expert in corporate banking, commercial law, intellectual property rights disputes. He is the founder of the firm Tiru and Tiru. He is accredited mediator of international repute and has trained thousands, including lawyers, sitting judges of various high courts and the Supreme Court, company secretaries and chartered accountants. In India and abroad, in the art of science of mediation. He is associated with several international arbitrations as an advocate and as an arbitrator. He co-founded Bangalore International Mediation, Arbitration and Conciliation Center, BIMAC, India's only nonprofit comprehensive international institutional ADR center. He is invited frequently to speak on various uh, fora, associations, universities, and institutions in India and abroad. He has authored several technical papers on mediation and areas of law, and this book being his debut. Among several global recognitions, you will be delighted to know that he was featured in the list of 71 legal icons of India by IBJL in 2021, and 100 legal luminaries of India by Lexis Nexus 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Mr. B. C. Tiruvengaram. My Lord, Justice Syriac Joseph. My Lord Justice Arvind Kumar. My Lord Justice Banur Mat. My Lord Justice Dinesh Kumar. Mr. Dr. Lalit Basin. Mr. Mohan Daspai. Dr. Pratima Murthy. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you all. Ellergo Namaskara. My printed speech is not before me, so I decided to speak impromptu. This is a momentous occasion, not because that I'm a lawyer or a mediator or an arbitrator, but as a common man. Mediation has been something very, very passionate to me. However, I never realized when I was a 16-year-old boy that I would got, get involved in mediation. At that point of time, a huge family that is on the maternal side, it's a big business community, huge family, went into litigation. Before going to litigation, there's huge dispute, partition, bitterness to the court. As a 16 year old, I, my heart felt very bad that my uncles were fighting. They are having issues with my grandfather. I took the initiative to mediate. Strangely, no one laughed at me, but the mediation failed not because that I was a kid, but I thought it was for many reasons where the expectations of people did not meet. Later on in the year 1990, my dear friend Mohan and I, in a huge corporate dispute, ventured to mediate between the, fa the families involved in this huge corporate house. There again, we failed. Later on, when I was trained as a mediator, I realized the real cause of the failures. I was an interested person being a family member. I was not neutral. I was not independent. Similarly, 
Mr. Pai and I, we are advising one group. And naturally, I cannot expect, or could not have expected the other group to trust us. What is very, very important in negotiation of any kind, be it a dispute or deal, we should win the confidence and trust of the person with whom you are dealing to. We should be absolutely neutral, unbiased, and totally independent, independent with respect to the subject matter of the dispute or the parties as such. This is what I learned in a structured mediation process. And that makes a vast difference, which I've witnessed in the thousands of mediations I have dealt in more than a decade and a half. I, I'm immensely pleased by the presence of all of you, the distinguished guests on the dais and virtually who are present. At this moment, when I talk about mediation as such, when we want to make minds meet, I remember the famous poem of our Rashtrakavi, Rabindranath Tagore, where the mind is without fear. Where the mind is without fear, and the head is held high, where the knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where the words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into dreary desert sand of dead habit where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action, into the heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. There are many mediation, mediator friends in this August audience. They will all agree with me. We can't bring a resolution among disputing parties when there is an element of fear with life lurking in their minds. And this is what we trained mediators do. I have brought this book to share my experiences. And it is not a law book. I urge everyone who can have a copy of this book to go through it and to avoid or minimize conflict. I don't say avoid, to minimize conflict which we all can do. On this momentous occasion, I fondly remember my teachers in Dominic Savio and St. Beats in Chennai, Ramakrishna Missions Vivekananda College, Chennai, Government RC College of Commerce, Bangalore, SJRC College, Bangalore, my mentors, where I did my chartered accountancy, Mr. Singhvi, Mr. Devaraj Anuni, my senior, Mr. V.A. Mohan Rangam, who is present here at age of 95 plus, who has graced this occasion. And my former senior, late Mr. R. Krishnamurti, my mediators gurus, Judge Leo Papas, and Ms. Teresa Carey of ISDLS San Francisco, California, USA. I am honored by my guru, Professor Nagabhushan, sir, I am blessed. You taught me law, I'm, I'm blessed. I used to wonder how my late father, Professor B.K. Sirajan, wrote as many as 13 books in Kannada and English and hundreds of technical papers. Likewise, my late uncle, Dr. B.K. Venkatraman, authored several books and papers. They are my inspirations, and without their blessings, I don't think I could have penned this book. Mr. Brijesh Singh, Mr. Anand Krishna, 
my dear friend professor chandrashekar ms ramya beeti have graciously spent lot of the time reviewing and editing this book if there are errors there may be they are solely mine please point that out and we'll correct it i am blessed to have the forward contribution by the great icon the lord chief justice mn venkatachalaya who will be joining us later during the day virtually my dear friend mr chandra mauli of judge press who is also the master of ceremonies of this evening has taken lots of personal interest in getting this book published efficiently and in a high timely manner my son mr manik bt and my young friend mr akshay nayak have worked tirelessly to ensure to provide all technical support leading to this launch i thank all my mediators friends who are assembled here and those who are not here for sharing their experiences with me my wife revathi my family have been and my family have been great support and they have sacrificed the time in helping me in this venture i also thank my staff for assisting me in a timely manner this book would not have been possible without the honorable judges past and present as well as the litigants who have accepted mediation and conflict resolution i'm grateful to them i sincerely hope this book would be help would help all those who want to minimize conflict sarvajano sukhino ban thank you very much thank you uh, tirvengram absolutely grateful i think uh, i've known tiru for so many years and uh, what i found is that gratitude is a one that he always falls back on thank you so much uh, tirvengram for the lovely words we have uh, another luminary which is uh, dr lalit basin who is logged in from delhi Mr Lalit Basan is currently the president of the Society of Indian Law Firms and also the managing partner of Basin and Company in Delhi. He is also the president of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators of India. He is a founder partner of Basin and Company New Delhi, a leading law firm of India. He is the executive president of the Indian Law Foundation. A former president of the Bar Association of India, he was awarded the plaque of honor by the Prime Minister of India in 2002. and the national law day award in 2007 by the president of india he was awarded honorary membership of the iba in melbourne in 1994 for his outstanding services to the legal profession mr basin was ordered uh, was awarded a doctor of laws honoris causa by jaipur university in 2013 his areas of specialization apart from various others include aviation employment and labor entertainment media banking finance consumer protection and dispute resolution ladies and gentlemen i present to you the luminary dr talit basin thank you very much honorable mr justice arvind kumar chief justice of gujarat high court honorable mr justice p s dinesh judge high court of karnataka honorable mr justice seria ek joseph former judge supreme court of india honorable mr justice s r banurmat former chief justice of kerala high court mr t v mohandas pai dr pratima murthy mr thiru vengadam but not less uh, but also revti his distinguished wife i bring to you greetings from the bar association of india and from the society of indian law firms as well as from the chartered institute of arbitrators this is not a law book 
it is more than good prose it is like a brilliant piece of poetry like a poem a long poem it makes very pleasant reading this book highlights virtues of amiable and amicable living and conduct and need to resolve differences through consensual mode as you are all aware particularly your lordships that consensual form of dispute resolution is not unknown to us right from ancient times we have adopted this system it is a part of our heritage it is a part of our culture which is reflected in the panchayat system which was a form of administration of justice through consensual mode and not through the technicalities of law it was not adversarial as we have things today this book takes us back to our noble heritage and culture of what we call in hindi or hindustani samjhauta samjhauta means settlement with emphasis on justice and not on law besides the text which is written beautifully the highlights of the book are the illustrations depicting emotions and very well researched case studies it is a great contribution to the cause of promoting meeting of minds i will quote the author who writes in his preface he said that i have interspersed case studies with concepts to make it easier for readers to understand the underlying point the underlying point being meeting the minds to resolve differences of opinion he has done so the author has done so remarkably well and with great success and i just quote one sentence from honorable justice venkat chelaiya whom i hold in the highest esteem having had the privilege of appearing before him many many times when he was his lordship was in the supreme court he says mediation is the new mantra for judicial survival and he says so with some sense of responsibility because litigation has totally broken down you see the judicial the system of administration of justice arbitration has not taken off because we don't have good arbitration institution therefore the answer is obviously as pointed out by justice venkat chalaiya it is the new mantra for judicial survival and for the survival of our system of administration of justice i have great pleasure in being a part of this event to bring out this book of great significance it will be a welcome addition not just in the lawyers uh, libraries or the judges libraries but i think it should be there in every law school with every corporate house so that they know what they are looking for i always believed in this and i tell my my colleagues senior and junior after having put in now six decades of law practice that a bad settlement is better than successful litigation and i firmly believe in that my compliments to my dear friend mr thiru vengadam who has really done pioneering work in this field by bringing out this book heartiest congratulations to you thiru all the best
Thank you, Doctor, for those wonderful words. We have another stalwart among us, Mr. TV Mohandas Pai, a chartered accountant and a financial expert. He is a chairman of Manipal Global Education. He is a Padma Shri awardee and former CFO and board member at Infosys. He's also the co-founder of Akshya Patra, the world's largest midday meal program. Mr. Pai has served as a chairman of the board of SEDBI and uh, now a board member of the National Stock Exchange of India. He has emerged as one of India's most prolific angel investors. He has helped start over 10 different funds in venture, growth, and public markets. He was voted CFO of the year in 2001 by IMA India. He won the best CFO in India award from Finance Asia in 2002 and best chief financial officer in India, in the best managed companies poll conducted by Asia Money in 2004. He was also a member of the Kelkar Committee, constituted by the Ministry of Finance, Government of India, for reforming direct taxes and non-resident taxation committee, the high power committee of e-commerce and taxation. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Mr. T.V. Mohandas Pai. Honorable justices, the courts, eminent members here, my friend Thiruvengadam, ladies and gentlemen, I'm deeply honored to be here and very humbled that I could share the dice with justices of the courts whom we always admire and stand up in awe every single day. They have the power to decide our future and their voice is the law. And we as students of law and citizens are brought up always to respect the law and to obey the law without question. And to those who lay down the law, we always owe our respect and obedience. So I'm very humbled. This is an extraordinary book for very many reasons. Human beings will always have conflict when we live together. We are emotional creatures. We live in our mind. We have relationships with people. And the relationships are determined by our communication, our behavior, and how we react to each other. Many of us are alpha males and alpha females who want to dominate. The law of nature is every creature wants to dominate somebody else. That is inbred in our DNA. I'm sure Dr. Pratima can talk about it, why we behave in a particular way and why are we aggressive and why do we want to win? And in a society where everybody wants to win and there is no space for everybody to win, somebody has to lose. And that's why there is conflict. There's conflict within families, there's conflict within business, there's conflict in society, there's conflict in politics, et cetera. But the big issue for all of us is, how do we resolve our conflicts and move along and resolve our conflicts in such a way that everybody appears to be a winner? It is true that everybody cannot get whatever they want. And when we go to a court, it is a binary decision. A binary decision because the judge will look at the law, interpret the law, look at the facts, understand the facts and give a judgment. And the judgment is binding on both parties. One party could be happy, another may not be happy, even though maybe the judge with proper compassion may try to accommodate the best interest of both. But the judge has to take a decision. And the decision very often may not be something to the liking of both the parties, but they have to abide by it. Now, this issue became very important to us at Infosys when we were hit by a sexual harassment case in the US. We were shocked when we had the case against us because we never thought we'll have a case like that. And when we went to meet our lawyers, they scared us to say, we could have very large, you know, what do you call it, judgments against us for huge compensation. And the case could go to trial with the jury selected by the courts who are all local Americans. And we are from a very different country and we were really apprehensive what to do. But the law in the US is that when you have a case like this, you go for mediation. So we went to mediation and the mediator was a retired judge and he spoke to us and he explained everything to us. The mediation did not work, but the end of it, both of us understood where exactly 
we were in this particular case. Then, of course, it went back to the to the lawyers, and the lawyers are also very smart in the U.S. Possibly they're a little bit more advanced than our lawyers here. They had a target of fees. So once they met the target of fees, they told us you better settle to both the parties because they felt that the trial may take too long and it could be much more expensive. So once everybody is happy, the lawyers were happy. We were happy because we had this fear of a large claim. We all sat across the table and we settled and we had a, a settlement where we paid some money and all the cases were withdrawn or whatever it is. But the first occasion when we went through mediation and it was a good experience. And I would commend mediation to everybody because as you grow older in life, you realize that most conflicts are unnecessary. The winner is the loser. And we all lose, especially when we come to families. In a family, relationship is important. We have only one life. And the life is not going to come back. And life is full of relationships. Relationship within the family, within friends, within, with others. And even though you could win a judgment and make a lot of money or get money and assets, you're not going to take the assets with you when you come to the end of your life. At the end of your life, what is left is memories. It's only memories and the feeling that you have towards others and others have feeling towards you, whether you have been good to everybody and whether you advance society better. So what is the use of a victory when you fight it out, you know, legally or otherwise, and you emerge winner, but you leave a lot of unhappy family members and others behind. And even in business, if you have a conflict for money, you have a conflict for claims, it's better to go for a resolution because in business, money has a time value. And if you go to courts, it does take time. It does take a lot of time. At the end of it, 10, 15 years, if you get a money judgment, very often the interest lost is much more than the judgment that comes in your favor. So it's much better for both sides. Though for the side that has to pay, it could be more valuable because they can prolong it and take something else. For the end of it, it hurts your business because in business, the most important asset you have is the time that you spend on a business. If your time is taken up, in conflicts, time is taken up in courts. It serves no purpose, according to me. So I would think that mediation is extremely important, even in business, apart from family matters. And mediation is important in family settlements. Family settlements are very complex things because you are large families. There's a family, the Kilosker family, which has now gone into a case with the Supreme Court where the court has asked them to mediate and mediation has failed. And, I, and when you have a family settlement where there are many brothers and sisters and property has to be divided, what do you do? How do you divide? And what do you fight for? At the end of it, they're your own blood. They're your own people. You've grown up with them. How can you see them in the face? So I would commend every parent who has some assets that in their lifetime, they must divide the assets among all the children, give everybody the due share and make them live happily without anybody winning or losing. So many of us work very hard and create wealth but we don't give away in our lifetime. And then possibly many of us don't write a will. And even if you write a will, the way it will goes into contest. What is the point of leaving unhappiness after your life when you've worked very hard to create something for your family? And there too, getting a mediator to come and talk to your family members and the family and sit down together to distribute is something very good. The last point I want to suggest is mediation for tax cases. But in 2014 and 2020, uh, 22, even though Arun Jaitley promised us to end tax terrorism, tax terrorism only enhanced. The amount of dispute has gone up from 4 lakh crores to 12 lakh crores. The cases have gone up. The cases don't seem to have any chance of settlement. Maybe you should have mandatory mediation. So I would uh, request all the justices, especially Justice Malimath, who is the chair of the Karnataka Law Commission, to examine whether mediation can be made mandatory. Mandatory for family matters, mandatory for business disputes, and mandatory uh, for tax matters too, uh, because in tax, we have the largest lack of ease of doing business and possibly the biggest, uh, biggest problem for any foreign investor, an Indian investor in a business today is the kind of tax dispute that arise because of unfettered power of the tax collection, collector, which often leads to tax extortion, not tax collection, uh, without any limitation on the power. And court procedure takes too long. For example, sir, uh, if you get a claim, an income tax officer can make a profit into a loss at his discretion without any logic. And then you fight it out. You lose at the commissioner level. You, you win at the appellate level, at the tribunal. You win at the high court, win at the Supreme Court. And in one of our cases, the Supreme Court judgment was not implemented by the tax authorities. And we had to go to the high court to get uh, you know, a contempt petition. 
So I think we require mediation all too, because we have to live together. And you understand that as you get older, when you're young and you have a rush of adrenaline and you are very positive and you want to win, you probably do not understand. And now we have sufficient people with wisdom in this place. And especially since Thiru has done a book, and the conclusion of the book is that most conflicts are due to human ego, due to human emotion, and not because of the facts. And misjudgment and differences come about because they don't understand each other. We close our mind, and that's why I would commend this book to everybody and congratulate Thiru for bringing out this book. Thank you very much. Kundas Pai for sharing why practicality and pragmatic. And the next stupendous achiever amongst us who's going to be speaking next is Dr. Fatima Murthy, who received her MBBS degree from the Bangalore Medical College. She obtained a DPM and MD, Psychological Medicine from Nimhans. She's a fellow of the Royal College of Physicians, FRCP Glasgow. She was the head of the Department of Psychiatry in Nimhans and took charge as the director in the June last year. She was instrumental in the development of state-of-the-art center for addiction medicine at Nimhans. She has served as a consultant and worked with United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, the International Labor Organization and the World Health Organization and the National Human Rights Commission. Dr. Pratima has received numerous awards and honors, including the prestigious Dr. Raja Ramanna State Award by the government of Karnataka and Lifetime Achievement Award from the Rotary International. She was honored with the World Health Organization Regional Director's Special Recognition Award on World No Tobacco Day in 2021 for her remarkable service in tobacco control. She has over 300 research publications in various international indexed journals and scientific books to her credit. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dr. Fatima Murthy. Thank you very much for asking me to be here today. Good evening to everybody. Uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Siriak Joseph, who's joined us online. Honorable Mr. Justice Aravind Kumar. Honorable uh, Mr. Justice Dinesh Kumar. Honorable Just uh, Mr. Justice S.R. Banurmat. Um, my friend, Mr. Mohandas Pai. Dr. Lalit Bhasan is online with us. Mr. Thiru Vengadam. All the distinguished luminaries in today's evening's program, the family members of Thiru, and several friends that I see in the audience. At the outset, let me congratulate you, Thiru, on this very, very timely publication. I'll talk about it a little later. But first, I wanted to say that just as you spoke about your experiences as a 16-year-old, I was really intrigued and extremely delighted on reading the work of Nelson Mandela about a few decades ago on conflict resolution. If you can actually do conflict resolution in such extenuating circumstances, it should actually be much easier when it involves material goods to be able to do conflict resolution much better. Mandela also said that every conflict is potentially resolvable and therefore it becomes very important for all of us to think about how, what underlies conflicts and how they can be resolved. Thiru has been talking about making minds meet. I heal minds at Nimhans. So we make sure that healed minds reduce conflict at the very beginning. So we do a lot of the, what we call the upstream events to make sure that when there is psychological distress, when people are disturbed, hurt, you know, dist their relationships have gone sour, how to set it right so that it does not escalate into something which requires a legal conflict resolution. But let me step back before my role as a mental health professional, as a psychiatrist, 
to actually see my mother-in-law is in the audience. And if you want a really good conflict resolver, she is probably the best conflict resolver I've ever seen. Because I think, as was mentioned, I think we had a very good system in society which brought people together, which allowed them to sit down, to look at things in a different matter, in a, in a different uh, lens, and to see that if they did not sort things out, that things could escalate into much, much more bitterness, as Mohan said. And therefore, I think conflict resolution is about being empathetic, being understanding, being a good communicator. Thiru's book is replete with examples of good communication, both verbal communication and nonverbal communication. And these are all extremely important in being able to resolve conflict. We talked about why conflicts arise. A lot of it is around material possessions and interpersonal relationship problems. I think COVID has been a real, you know, life changer for most of us. We've really understood how, you know, how small and petty these conflicts seem to be, and yet we fight. I think justice and equality are things we long for as a society. But one thing that comes in the way of having justice and equality met are conflicts. And these include conflicts at a personal level, at a societal level, and as we see now at the global level. So I think we need huge interventions, which really are in some ways common sense interventions. We need to put our emotions aside. We need to value relationships and people more than possessions and material gains. And therefore, I think there are huge opportunities to help people who are in conflict, families who are in conflict, societies who are in conflict over a variety of reasons. And of wow. course, global, uh, I don't know where this is coming from. Something, okay. So I think there are huge opportunities for such conflict resolutions. And Thiru, I hope what you started, as you mentioned in the early, in 2013, isn't it? You've, you've been working on this book for the last seven or eight years. I hope that with the enlightened audience that we have here, we are going to see much more of conflict resolution at a personal level, at a societal level, and even at the global level. I believe the world needs healing at this time. And I do hope that we will see a completely different way of resolving conflict through dialogue, through interpersonal communication, and from the fact that everybody is a winner, the loser is also the winner. And I think that message is something that will help all of us to heal ourselves, to be a, a more equitable, just, and happy society in the long run. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pratima, for reminding us that uh, values are more valuable than valuables. The next uh, speaker, a legal expert, we have Honorable Justice uh, Mr. P.S. Dinesh Kumar. Justice P.S. Dinesh Kumar practiced in the year 1990 in the chambers of Honorable Mr. Justice Shivaraj V. Patil, former judge, Supreme Court of India. He was appointed as an additional central government standing counsel in the year 1998 and as a senior standing counsel in the year 2003. He has served as a senior panel counsel for CBI, uh, senior standing counsel for BSNL, for UPSC, UGC, AIGC, and the National Council for Teacher Education, NCTA. Served as a standing counsel for KPTCL, BESCOM, KSRTC, and BDA. He was trained by ISDLS California and, is, and he worked as a mediator and a trainer in mediation. He was appointed as the additional judge of Karnataka High Court in 2015 and was made the permanent judge in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Honorable Mr. Justice P. Dinesh Kumar. Good evening to everybody. 
dignitaries on the dais, dignitaries who have joined online, dignitaries in the audience, ladies and gentlemen. It's always a delight to be in the functions which Thiru organizes. He calls me more often. The title of the book is uh, Making Minds Meet, and he precisely knows how to do this. We have worked together for several years as mediators, trainers, and he's a great human being and a great mediator. Coming to the book, he had a dream to see that the minds meet and people do not suffer by the conflict and the litigation. What do we need in the world ultimately? If you sit all alone, meditate, think about the peace to unto ourselves with our dear ones, with our loved ones, with our friends and relatives. If we can't achieve that in life, the life is useless. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had a two day long seminar where His Lordship Justice Arvind Kumar was addressed the occasion day before yesterday. That was on the subject of giving legal aid one of the speakers mentioned that in the recent past, by this legal aid and alternative dispute resolution system, a litigation which was pending for five decades, one half of century was solved. To that extent, it's heartening, fair enough. But it's not uncommon for the legal fraternity and those who are in courts who, are, who know how the courts are functioning, what's happening in the legal system. That in any civil case, it goes on somewhere from about half a decade to two decades and little more or plus or minus. And in criminal cases of equal proportion or little less than that. At the end of the day, the person who would have possibly won with a decree in his hand, his problem starts as one of the great judges has said that the problem of a litigant starts once he gets the decree. Decree he has, it has to be executed, otherwise it's a paper decree in his hand. Ladies and gentlemen, I as a student of law and having been trained in mediation, having trained people in mediation, I have a strong conviction that we must make a society free from the evil of conflict. Perhaps very senior lawyers, the nonagenarian, the senior of Mr. Thiru Venkatam, he is also here in the audience. A gentleman, I was just speaking to him. He is aged 95, and I was telling him that the, the present day generation cannot perhaps conceive of the legal, the, the nuances of the legal profession, what he had possibly seen and practiced. The position today is unless and until we find solutions as we in in the text languages, as we call it as ASAP, as early as possible. It's not desirable to have a long drawn conflict and loss of peace of mind. In that context, Mr. Thiru has done a brilliant job by bringing out this book. I read it from cover to cover. He has given great illustrations, photographs, experiences, with the forward by 
the Bhishma Pitama of our Indian judiciary. And I'm sure that reading of this book by any commoner, and particularly a person who has any litigation in his hand, and, put, and also the, and the lawyers who assist, who aid, and who also try in resolution of dispute will go a long way in understanding what is required of life, what each and every human being is looking at and how to achieve that peace in which the, the, the person the, who reads the book will get the insight of it. And he, it will be a, not only a bliss for himself and bliss for those who are at and around him, because it will, he will emerge himself as a Puritan. Mr. Tiru, thank you very much for having thought of me and inviting me here. And I feel it an honor to be here. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the patience that you have for having heard me for some time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justice, sir, for your insights. The next uh, person is a dashing personality. That's what uh, Thiru has always told me. Honorable Mr. Justice S.R. Banurmat. He was enrolled as an advocate in 1973, practiced in the High Court of Karnataka and the Supreme Court of India. He was appointed as additional state public prosecutor where he served till 1994, and later as state public prosecutor. He was appointed as additional judge of the Karnataka High Court in 1997, and a permanent judge, 1999. In 2009, he was elevated as a Chief Justice of Kerala High Court, and on his retirement, he was the chairperson, Maharashtra State Human Rights Commission from 2013 until 2018. He is presently the chairperson of the Karnataka State Law Commission, and he is the honorary vice chairman of BIMAC. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Honorable Mr. Justice S.R. Banurmat. My Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, former Chief Justice, Syriac Joseph, presently Lokayakta of Kerala. Honorable Justice Arvind Kumar. Honorable Justice Dinesh Kumar. Honorable Justice Shrishanand Shastri. Honorable Justice Amran Nawar, B.A. Patil, and other legal field persons, mediators, uh, Dr. Pratima, I'm sorry, I did not mention Dr. Pratima and all the friends here. I'm very happy to be invited for the launching of this excellent book, Making Minds Meet, authored by Thiruvangadam, a senior advocate and one of the few internationally acclaimed, not only as a mediator, but also an experienced master trainer in the science and art of mediation. Both mediation is a science, it is also an art. And that's what Hiro has tried to explain in very beautiful language. Now we all know, especially the elder persons, that process of mediation was in existence in India from ancient times. If you have read Mahabharata, Krishna was the probably first mediator to approach both parties, Kauravas and Pandavas, to settle their dispute. But unfortunately, thereafter, they did not fortify and it ended in war. But people learned a lesson that it can be settled, matter can be settled. Even till recently, uh, in our villages, there was what is called as Panchayat Katte. Five judges, elder persons who are not literally trained, legally trained, 
used to sit under a tree and uh, and settle the disputes between the warring parties this was they were that's why they were called as pancha parameshwar their fate was in their the fate of the people was in their hands and they used to settle without any legal technicalities all the dispute used to be settled unfortunately due to urbanization and availability of legal machinery that is courts slowly the village mediation has almost died due to this the courts are already heavily burdened and all sorts of litigations come before the courts it is my experience of almost now 50 years in this legal field that uh, sundry matters fight between husband and wife which could be settled by themselves sitting together for 5 minutes now it is reaching up to supreme court come back again go back spend thousands of money peace of mind and probably dr pratima would know the effect on the minds of the children the conflict between husband and wife simple example i know when i was the president of bangalore mediation center and piro was uh, being trained there was a mediation case a fight between brother and sister sister had filed a suit for partition and it was being dragged almost for 10 or 11 years matter was referred to the mediation center and when we try to the mediation art ultimately it was found the sister was disturbed because her brother was bringing good sari to his wife rather than to his sister this was the simplest reason he is not treating me properly since his wife has come that's all and for this they had spent thousands of rupees they had gone to three or four courts and still the matter was pending this is how the conflict resolution can be done now as i was mentioning after this court burden courts are being burdened with these litigations in 2006 a visionary in the form of justice sirak joseph came to the karnataka as chief justice and he started looking it at how to use the adr methods to resolve the disputes easily and to lessen the burdens it was he who interacted with the institute of the institute for the study and development of legal systems which is isdls uh, in america it's at california and uh, which is the uh, foremost developing uh, uh, which has developed this modern technique of mediation team of experts were invited from the us isdls to train few uh, selected lawyers in karnataka uh, i was one of the few judges involved in this process and it was the first court annexed mediation center that is bmc and fortunately i was the first president of this bmc the reason i am mentioning this is that when we decided to train at least 100 top notch lawyers in mediation to do pro bono work i was i am pleasantly surprised i invited justice arvind kumar and uh, just, uh, mr tiru both were reluctant earlier because of their practice heavy practice somehow i persuaded used my technique of mediation with them and today they are one of the top notch uh, mediators of uh, this experiment he has justice arvind kumar has carried out recently in gujarat also now the 
so far as the author is concerned, I'm only going to speak about the author today, not about the book. Other limiters are speaking about the mediation book. Uh, the training he took, the enthusiasm he showed was such that ultimately he was chosen as one of the best trainer, master trainers. And in this, after this training is over, he has trained not more than, not less than 4,000 lawyers, students, and judges in this city for the mediation. His dream or his passion for mediation did not stop. He ventured into a nonprofit NGO by Mac. Bangalore International Mediation Arbitration Center, of which again, I'm forced to be the vice president. One of the best centers where, which is now involving its work, not only in India, but nearly more than 100 countries. Uh, training the mediators were settling the disputes all over the world, almost globally. Now this is, his passion, which uh, attracted me also to join BIMAC. Now, after going to this book, uh, I feel that his experience, vast experience in mediation all over the world has led to bring out this excellent book. And uh, he has, in simple words, uh, stated, how to solve the disputes and how to come to how to come to win-win position from either side. Uh, if it is a court, it is either win or lose. But here, mediation is win-win situation. Now, I'm sure this will be a best ready reckoner, not only for advocates and mediators, but also to the judges who will be interested in mediation. Even otherwise, uh, it will be an excellent book and guide for any person who is interested in this mediation. Now, only one chapter I was very much interested and found attractive was the chapter on communication and conflict, as Dr. Pratima has also mentioned as a psychiatrist or psychologist. It is one of the best uh, explain chapter for communication, verbal and nonverbal, which is useful not only to the mediator, but also to the judges. By gesture, by nonverbal action of the people, you can look into and hope for his office. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, incidentally, Honorable Justice Bhishma Pitamaha, Honorable Justice Venkat Chalaya is here. We welcome you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I congratulate Tiru and his entire team for bringing out this beautiful and valuable book. I wish all the success. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for uh, sharing your insights and okay. Another wonderful uh, luminary in the legal field, as told by the author, Honorable Mr. Justice Arvind Kumar the 27th Chief Justice of the Gujarat High Court, enrolled as an advocate in 1987 and practiced across Karnataka civil courts, magistrate courts, appellate tribunals, and high court. In 1999, he was appointed as the additional Central Government Standing Council at the High Court and was appointed as a member of the Regional Direct Taxes Advisory Committee in the year 2002. He had also served as a Standing Council for 
Income Tax Department and was appointed as the Assistant Solicitor General of India in the year 2005. He was also a trained mediator by ISDLS California, USA. In 2009, Justice Kumar was elevated as an additional judge at the High Court and was made a permanent judge in 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Honorable Mr. Justice Arvind Kumar. A very good evening. Honorable Justice M. N. Venkatachalaya, former Chief Justice of India. Honorable Justice Siriak Joseph, former Judge Supreme Court of India. Honorable Justice Banurmat, former Chief Justice Kerala High Court. My esteemed brothers, Justice Dinesh Kumar, Justice Shishananda, Justice Shastri, Justice Amranenwar, Justice B. A. Patil, learned senior advocates, <coughs> learned advocates, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the Mr. Thiru family. Thiru conducts a lot of programs. So every time he used to call me, I'd say, I used, he used to tell me, sir, I am doing this program. Will you be able to come? Because of little pressing engagements, I used to say, no, it's not possible. This Saturday, it's not possible. This time he was very, very clever. He called me and said, sir, are you coming to Bangalore on this weekend, 15, 16, 17? It's four days holidays you are. I said, yes, and I was caught. He said, 16th evening, I'm having a program, sir, please do come. So I had no option. But despite all this, he is my best friend. We were at the bar. We were the first trained mediators. I recollect in the year 2008, just before summer vacation started, Justice Syriac Joseph, the then Honorable Chief Justice, called me and said, Arvind, you are going for a training program. The details of that will be told to you by Mr. Justice Banurmat. You go and meet Justice Banurmat. So I, I, we were dare not enough to say to the Chief Justice, no. So I said, sir, please, why don't you spare me? Because a lot of cases are there. If I'm going for a training for the two for 15 days, it may be dismissed for default. I said, you go and talk to Justice Banurmat. So I went to his Lordship's chamber and Justice Banurmat, I talked to him and I told him, sir, this is our problem. You just, you don't, he said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. And uh, later on, I came to know none of our cases. We were 20 advocates in the first batch. And my name, since it started from A, I was the first one. So he used to, and I, we were surprised, none of our cases got dismissed. So after the training program, we asked, sir, how is it that, uh, no, he said we had met in the full court and we had requested all the honorable judges that those advocates who are on training don't dismiss their cases for default. So the next batch, there was a lot of demand. <laughs> and uh, I would like to share, before just sharing my thoughts on this book, just few sentences, we are all eager to hear Honorable Justice M.N. Venkatachala and Honorable Justice Syriac Joseph. <clears throat> the first, the last day before just my elevation, that was on 23-6-2009, I did my last mediation. It was a simple, super specific performance. Many of my lawyer friends would know what is a suit for specific performance. An agreement would have been entered into by A to sell the property to B. So a dispute would have arisen because B would have refused to part with the property by executing the sale deal. <clears throat> so I called both the parties. I had discussion. First private caucus, what called private negotiation and private discussion, preliminary introductory talk, everything was over. Afterwards, I came to know they were, it was on egos, they were fighting. Plaintiff's suit was, though it was for specific performance, 
it was both were agreeing because we had to maintain the confidentiality since the matter got resolved i am sharing it with you <clears throat> he said sir i borrowed money from him because it was for my daughter's marriage you please ask him whether if it is true or not and for security he asked for some paper so i said i wanted very badly in need of money so i took 5 lakhs from him i have signed blank papers now he got it typed as though i have agreed to sell my house this is the only house i have got and in fact i wanted to repay it to him i had asked for extension extension of time he had refused so after the marriage about 10 days after the marriage he suddenly landed at my house and when my sambandhi that is my new in-laws my daughter's in-laws they were present he shouted at me i lost my respect and this man the other person when i had a discussion he said sir he had borrowed money and in the presence of his in-laws he scolded me and asked me to get out so i will not compromise if he says sorry i will withdraw my case today this man the person who had borrowed money he said sir i will do anything i will cut my head and keep it on the table but i will not ask sorry so i thought the mediation failed but some of or the other i persuaded the parties and ultimately i told him you say you he started speaking in a emotional way he got emotional and he started shouting i said this is not the way you should behave in a mediation ultimately he said sorry no don't say sorry you shouted when he was also present you should say sorry in, when he is also present i called him again and said he will say sorry you just keep quiet so he came and he, in fact he told sorry to me he thought he says sorry to other man so it got resolved that's a different issue this is one and the second one was where seven sisters and four brothers old time that filed a suit for partition 27 years the matter had gone to high court and it was matter was remanded back it was pending before the it had been referred for mediation ultimately it was resolved we were able to persuade and it got resolved in such a manner the eldest daughter the first plaintiff and the last dependent that is the 11th dependent their age gap was somewhere around 19 years so she said he is like my son and each one was crying all the 11 members were crying they were saying you take the property he said no no we don't want the property you keep it to yourself this was because of the settlement arrangement she said i have not he has not come to my house for past 26 years sir my only request she said the eldest amongst them she was 81 she said sir my only request is sir please tell them that all of us will meet today to have a festival food in our house i do not want a single naya paisa from anybody god has been kind to me this is the power of mediation and the nuances of this mediation can be easily inferred from this book of mr tiruvengaram especially i was touched by page number 200 where the daughter after having not seen her father she comes back and after seeing his photo she says i am like him and i look like his grandmother his mother that is my grandmother and she slaps on his cheek and says where had you been for all these 23 years and she hugs him and cries and i can connect it to this one incident after being elevated as a judge one day a dispute came before me small dispute but the moment i saw the names i said no no we will i'll call it in the chambers let the parties come to my chamber because both of them were advocates i said no you should not fight in the courts so i called them to my chambers <clears throat> and i told them can you not mediate they said sir if you are mediating we are agreeable but we will not go before the bangalore mediation center we do not want others to know that we are at loggerheads 
So I said, I can't do the mediation, now I am a judge. Then at that time, all right, even judges in Maharashtra, they do the mediation. I said on one condition, if for any reason it fails, I will not hear this dispute because you will be maybe disclosing so many things. So I should, later on the AFCON's judgment came where the judge himself is a mediator, he should not hear that matter. So I said, both of them agreed. They filed a joint memo. So I took it up. Since I knew both of them, their fathers, very intimately, I said, let us not do it in the court. You come to my house. So I called both of them. The girl came with a, her daughter, who was about two and a half years. And I had called this boy and told him, while coming, don't come empty-handed. Bring two Cadbury's chocolate. So he had come with chocolates. So initially, I had a word. And uh, both were not ready to speak. I said, sit down. I'll be outside. You just speak. Whatever you want, you speak. Before that, I said, all right, you give chocolate to that baby. He gave chocolate. She looked at her mother. Because children are now taught not to take anything from anybody. So she was reluctant to take the chocolates. I said, you take it. Again, she looked at her mother. Mother said, all right, you take it. So she was so happy to receive. After receiving it, mother said, thanks. Say thanks. She said, thank you, uncle. I was so touched. I could not control my tears. I said, look at your own daughter calling your uncle. It should not happen. So after 20 minutes, they screamed at each other. You did this, you did that. I wanted that emotions to come out. This is what happens, especially in a family dispute. It all came out. And that day I had to attend an engagement ceremony. So my, my wife was staring at me. Already 7.30. Some more there. I thought one family is getting there. There is a reunion. So this is how mediation was. Ultimately at 8 o'clock next day there was. And now I, I also came to know now they are having a son, second child. They are living happily. That is the one solace we get in mediation. This conflict of minds. My esteemed brother said, we should not, my Justice Dinesh Kumar said, we should see that we should, they don't get into this conflict. This is the basic tenet of our Indian philosophy. Dharma rakshati rakshitaha. You protect dharma, dharma will protect you. So we step in, lawyers, judges, courts, everyone will step in only when the conflict comes. So should we not create an conducive atmosphere of creating where there is no conflict? And that is how the psychologists like Dr. Pratima Murthy and all, they say, how you can see that? Even I saw there is what is for this to ease the tension, music therapy. Am I correct, madam? So these are all things where you can reduce your tension. This is only a question of conflict. And now coming to the issue of the recent pandemic, when I was here as the executive chairman of Legal Service Authority Karnataka, we did a mediation, I'm sorry, Lokadala. Normally every mega Lokadala we used to resolve about 20 to 40 cases of partition suits, dispute between brothers and sisters. And friends, you will be shocked that in the second wave, the total number of partition suits in the entire state of Karnataka that was settled was somewhere around 2,443 cases. We ourselves, organizers, we ourselves were shocked. We said, all right, you find out what is the reason. As Dr. Pratima put it, rightly so, this pandemic taught them. They said, no, let us not fight. Let us buy peace. So everyone agreed. They said, some of them were interviewed also. It is available in YouTube. They said, it is because of the reason that we don't know what happens to me tomorrow. I want to resolve it. I want to settle this dispute. <clears throat> this is how this mediation works. All these technicalities, how a mediator can play an important role and what are the requirements of a mediation and what mediation can have the effect on the society has been succinctly explained by my friend, Mr. Thiru. And I heartily congratulate him for this wonderful book. And I hope that many more such books would be in the offing.
which would be of great assistance to the <clears throat> learned members of the bar and all the stakeholders in fact when i went to gujarat and i took over after second day or third day i asked my registrar general where is mediation center he asked what is it sir <coughs> because there was no in fact the first mediation was in india was held on 12 4 19 next mediation would be one of the strategies which we want to adopt and see that there is involvement of the members of the bar to mohan das pai was telling about the american lawyers i can tell you with 100% conviction our indian lawyers are the best in the world <clears throat> sir the, i can tell you the moment when we sit in the bench and tell any of our advocates this is a case for mediation why don't you settle it the first thing they will say sir we will do it and 90% of that he settled so this is our success rate and of course bangalore mediation center a lot of advocate mr prashant chandra hamsa shweta anand all learned senior mediators are present here <coughs> we want this mediation to take off now you should also think of taking technology into consideration online mediation now online mediation is most important we were thinking we were we could not imagine about online courts about 3 years back now we are online courts so online mediation will not only save time money energy everything so mediators should think of on these and i hope uh, mr tiruvengadam will come out with a new book on online mediation for particularly in the view of a enactment central enactment being in the annual in so far as mediation is concerned and i thank mr tiru and his family for inviting me for this wonderful evening and i wish him all the success in all his future endeavors thank you jai hind namaskar thank you very much uh, honorable justice arvind sir i think uh, all of you will agree that the emotional connect is by far the most supreme connect we have the uh, most honorable mr justice siriak joseph who is logged in a pleasing and a very awesome personality siriak joseph sir as a lawyer before the kerala high court he served as additional advocate general state of kerala in july 1994 he was appointed as the permanent judge of kerala high court and in august 1994 he was the judge of the delhi high court in march 2005 he was appointed as the chief justice of the high court of uttaranchal now uttarakhand later in january 2006 he assumed office as the chief justice of the karnataka high court in july 2008 he was elevated as the judge of the supreme court of india till his retirement in january 2012 justice joseph assumed office as a member of the national human rights commission in 2013 he is currently the lok ayukta of kerala and he is the honorary chairman of bimac justice joseph is a champion for the cause of mediation and was a brainchild of the famous bangalore mediation center india's largest court and next mediation center he chaired the committee for drafting the mediation manual and for the mediation and project committee of the supreme court of india as a founder patron in chief of bangalore mediation center he was invited to the united states of america by justice department of america for promotion of mediation ladies and gentlemen i present to you honorable mr 
Justice Syriac Joseph. Most respected, most respected, Honorable Justice Simon Vengadajalaya. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, my lord. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Yes. Honorable Mr. Justice M.N. Vengadajalaya. Honorable Mr. Justice Banurmat. Honorable Mr. Justice Arvind Kumar. Honorable Mr. Justice P.S. Dinesh Kumar. Dr. Pardima Muti. Mr. T.V. Mohandas Pai. Dr. Lalit Bhasin and distinguished guests. I feel happy and privileged to associate with the launch of the Trivangadam's book, Making Minds Meet, Conflict to Consensus. I had a quick glance through the pages of this book, which impressed me with its looks as well as the content. Honorable Justice Vengata Jalaya has endorsed the book through his foreword. No more commendation is required in this case. I'm sure that this book will serve as an illustrated guide for mediators. It explains the concept and philosophy of mediation. It mentions the virtues of settlement of conflicts. It highlights the advantages of settlement through mediation. It narrates the steps or stages in the process of mediation. It prescribes the do's and don'ts for mediators. It underscores the importance of training for mediators. Mr. Mr. Thiruvangadam's deep knowledge and vast experience in the field of mediation and his ability to analyze and articulate have provided credibility and authenticity to the book. I congratulate Mr. Thiruvangadam and thank him for this valuable contribution to the justice delivery system. We all know that Mr. Thiruvangadam is today an internationally recognized mediator and trainer. I am happy and proud that he was among the first batch of mediators trained by the Mangalore Mediation Center, which was established was started in 2006 by the Karnataka High Court when I was the Chief Justice of that court. The Bangalore Mediation Center was a pioneering initiative of the Karnataka High Court, which became a model for other high courts in India. I proudly remember that I was heading the team which prepared the first mediation manual of the Bangalore Mediation Center and later the mediation manual of the MCPC, that is of the Supreme Court. I'm happy that after having, I'm happy that after being the mediator and trainer in BMC, Mr. Thiruvengadam's wings grew and spread and he established his own center, the Baimai, which is now internationally known and recognized. I have the honor of being 
the honorary chairman of the governing council of BIMAC. It is good that the legislature and the judiciary have recognized the mediation as part of the justice delivery system in India. As Honorable Justice Venkata Chalaya has said in the foreword, mediation has become the new mantra. The courts and judges are vying with each other to promote mediation. They want to be known as champions of mediation irrespective of the possibility of training and the availability of infrastructure. I say this as a word of caution. They should realize the difference between a trained mediator and an untrained untrained mediator. When I was in Bangalore, I used to explain the difference by saying that the difference between a trained mediator and an untrained mediator is, the difference, is similar to the difference between a surgeon and a butcher. Both of them are doing cutting and uh, the, all these things. But a surgeon does it in a different way. The butcher does not uh, uh, bother much about that. Today, I would say because I saw Dr. Pradima uh, Muthi there, that's why I'm saying the difference between, gynecology, between a trained mediator and an untrained mediator is similar to the uh, Difference between a gynecologist and a home nurse. You know what a gynecologist does? You know what a home nurse can do. For others who are interested in the field of law and order, I would say the difference between a trained mediator and an untrained mediator is similar to the difference between a police constable and a home guard. Both may be doing certain certain jobs, or they may be discharging certain functions, but does not mean that a home guard can be a police constable. However, I want to end my intervention with a positive note. When we started Bangalore Mediation Center, this is Bandurma, myself, and other uh, governors thought of a motto for the, and what we chose was peacemaking through mediation. Peacemaking through mediation. And that has great relevance today. That's why I am saying this. The whole purpose of that is this aspect of peace was mentioned by many speakers. So peacemaking through mediation is the motto or should be the motto of such institutions. The Bible says, blessed are those who work for peace or they shall be called the children of God. This is in the Sermon of Mount, Sermon on the Mount. You will find this passage which was liked by Mahatma Gandhi. Blessed are those who work for peace, they shall be called children of God. By being mediator and working for peace, the mediators are children of God. We are or they are entitled to be raised to that level. They can be treated as children of God. So we can imagine the greatness of the work done by the mediators in settling disputes or conflicts. 
I want to make two observations in the context of what was said earlier. One is, including Justice Banurman, many speakers said about our tradition or culture of having this settlement and mediation in the past. It is true that our forefathers for, his, for, uh, uh, for years and centuries tried to settle disputes, making use of the services of uh, the five wise men, or, or, or I don't know, whatever you call them, panjayat or whatever it be. But one essential difference we often forget. That is, these five people, they take the decision and hand down their decision to the parties. Whereas in today's mediation, according to the concept which uh, uh, or principle explained by and which we have been following. The decision is not taken by the mediator or mediators. The decision is taken by the parties themselves. The mediator is only a facilitator. Therefore, this qualitative difference between the practice in the past and the practice today has to be taken note of. I'm just, because uh, this is an open forum, um, I'm just provoking your thoughts. And I know I'm taking a big risk because Justice Bangadela is to come after me, but he has all the freedom and authority to correct me and to even condemn me, no problem. The second thing is, when uh, repeatedly, when Justice Bangadela was being referred to as Bhishma Pidamah, that uh, Justice uh, Manurmat said, Justice uh, Arvind Gumar said, and I think others also said. I am not very sure. I am not very. I am not very sure whether it will be proper to call him Bhishma Pidama. Sorry for uh, striking a different note like that. I will hold him much higher. The reason is, you know. When Bhandavas were defeated in the game of dice, they had pledged everything, including Draupadi. And then Duryodhan said, you have pledged your wife. You are defeated in the game. So what is pledged is the property of the one who won the game. So he sent his men to bring Draupadi to the, uh, the that, uh, Sabha. And first somebody went to call her. Draupadi said, you go and tell your master to answer two questions. One is, has an husband got the right to pred his wife in a game of dice? Second, has a person got the right to pledge another, another, another's wife in the game? He went there. He went and told uh, Duryodhan that this is what she said. Only if I get answer to these questions, I will come. But then she was forcibly brought to the uh, uh, court of Duryodhan. There also, she said, she raised the same question. All the elders were there. All teachers were there. She asked the same question. I want an answer from our elders to so these two questions. Has the wife got a right to pledge his wife in a game of dice? Is she is woman such a matter, article to be pledged? A question which is relevant even today. 
second question she said uh, has a person got the right to pledge another's wife because and she said explain i am the wife of not only yudhishthir i am also the wife of bhishma arjun nagul and sahadev how can how can yudhishthir pledge uh, bhishma's wife arjun's wife nagul's wife nobody had answered she challenged bhishma drona all these uh, elders all these elders including bhishma did not open their mouth bhishma looked down and sat there drona looked down and sat there all these people uh, all these elders teachers gurus and all those people sat there only one man among the hundred kauravas stood up and said brothers i think the question she raised is pertinent nobody has a right to pledge his wife and nobody has a right to pledge another's wife and therefore we cannot say that draupadi is the slave of duryodhana everybody else shouted it among the 100 kauravas only one person could stand up and say this everybody shouted it him and said no what duryodhan says will prevail here that man slowly silently walked out of the court of duryodhan you must be knowing the name of that person vigarna his name is vigarna we were not told about him we were told about bishma we were told about yudhishthir we were told about arjun and all these people karna but why vigarna was not discussed vigarna was not a leading character in any of these plays or stories or novels or poems no why i said why i why was proved to say this bishma was bishma was among the teachers elders who kept quiet at a time like that i therefore i would not like to call justice vengada jalaya a bishma pita he is much higher he is such much at much higher level because i am conscious of what dante said the hottest place in hell is reserved for those who remain neutral in a moral crisis i repeat the hottest place in hell is reserved for those who remain neutral in a moral crisis i know that justice vengadaila will not uh, remain neutral in a moral crisis and therefore he does not deserve the hottest place in hell and he does not deserve to be called pidamaha he is much much greater than that with this descending note i conclude i congratulate dr mr tiruvengadam and wish him all the best thank you thank you uh, honorable mr justice sirik joseph on that take and very insight to uh, give us about this gentleman great gentleman par excellence we have the great man waiting honorable mr chief justice yaman venkata chalaya was the 25th chief justice of india from 1993 to 1994 he is one of the foremost authority on india's constitutional law and human rights and was honored with the padma vibhushan india's second highest civilian honor in 2004 post retirement from 1996 to 1998 he was the chairperson of india's national human rights commission in 
he headed the National Commission to review the working of the Indian Constitution. Justice Venkata Chalaya was conferred the Doctor of Letters by the Pondicherry University and the Doctor of Laws, LLD, both honoris causa by Manipal University in 2012 and honorary doctorate from the Rani Chennama University, Belgaum in 2013. For this brilliant gentleman, please put your hands together to welcome Honorable Mr. Justice Yemen Makata Chalaya. You need to unmute, sir. Case dial up. We can't hear you, man. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Justice Sidek Joseph Sahib, Justice Harid Kumar, Justice Banal Mott, Justice Dinesh Kumar, Dr. Pratima Murthy, Sri TV Mohandas Pai, Sri Dr. Ladit Basin, Tirvangram, and all the respected invitees, members of the audience. I'm grateful for this invitation from Dilvangadam to be with you this evening. I'm most grateful to Justice Sirek Joseph Sahib for extricating me from the hottest place in hell and extricating me from the bed of arrows on which Vishma was placed. And uh, I'm grateful to him for his kindness. He has always been kind to me. In one of his uh, I had occasion to invite him for a talk in the Sarvodaya International Trust in Delhi some years ago. He spoke so beautifully about human duty and he said, it is not live and, live and let live. In the philosophy must be live and help live. He improvised on the old statement, live and let live, and said, our philosophy must be live and help live. And that was what the, the great Judge Matthew had once said in the Supreme Court. Thank you, Justice uh, Sirek Joseph Sahib, for your kindness to me. You have been very generous in your references to me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll take only five minutes to say what I have to say about. Uh, what is amazing to me is that while we, the human beings, and amazingly creative in, in, in inventing systems and institutions. We are equally amazingly non-creative in finding ways to use them to their full potential. Litigative instinct is an inbuilt inhibition in every individual in, in India. There's a story said about uh, the, the elephant performing elephants in the great circus, the Barnum and Barney, uh, 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 that the famous uh, uh, Barnum and Bailey Circus Company. Huge elephants, 15 feet high, huge elephants, were tied with threads which are only a, a, a bigger, thick uh, strands of uh, rope. Somebody asked them, why are you tying them with a thin rope, which is even your, the size of your little finger? How can, uh, how can you force them into the place through that small string. The trainer said from their infancy, elephants in from their childhood and infancy, they're tied with this thin, thin rope, thin strand of uh, string. And they're mentally trained to believe that they can't break away. Even if they grow up into a huge uh, mammoth elephant, they, they, their psychology is that they can't break away from that thin thread. And that is the way they, we are tied down to our legal system, the formal system, because we think that that's the only delivering mechanism for our litigative uh, problems. 
ladies and gentlemen, the alternative dispute systems are not, uh, we must now understand they're, they're not merely options. Tomorrow's litigation will be such that formal legal system will not be able to provide answers for it. Some of the problems will not have a formal adjudicative disposition at all. The concept of properties that will come up in the, in the future, you will have non-fungible assets. One can own a piece of Picasso and trade, trade that ownership of a piece of Picasso, a share in the painting of Picasso in the crypto market. You can own a piece of a share in a piece of moon and trade it in the crypto market. These these issues can't come before the formal litigative litigation system and get solutions at all. And mediation becomes a compulsion. Is um, in fact um, there's a beautiful instance which I quoted last in the last meeting when I was invited by a group of uh, uh, mediators. The psychological preparation for uh, parties. In fact, it is a story said about uh, Rolf Bunch, who was awarded a Nobel Prize for uh, his uh, efforts to bring about peace and uh, ceasefire between Arabs and Israelis far back in 1950. He was awarded a Nobel Prize. And when he started his mediation, he had ordered beautiful, very expensive Bavarian crockery for each one, each of the members of, of both sides. And in the hall, they displayed them on either side with a plaque on each of the sets saying that this is an expression of gratitude for the members to have achieved a consensus and agreed upon a ceasefire and made the mediation a success. Everybody looked at it and their, their minds were prepared and somebody asked him, supposing the mediation had failed, what would you have done with the crockery sets? He, he was a giant of a man, he was six feet plus. He, he was a giant of a man physically. He said, I would have crashed them on the head of each one of them. And that prepared the mind for them, to, even from the beginning, to, to look forward to a, a, a positive result in the mediation. I referred in the, Thirvangadam has written a beautiful book. It's a beautiful reading. He asked me, he gave me the privilege of contributing a small foreword to it. I, in the foreword, I have referred to an article which was published 15 times in the Reader's Digest. It was, that article was repeated 15 times from year, from every three years, it used to be uh, reprinted, uh, republished for, uh, for its popularity. The, head, the name of that article is, May I Borrow Your Jack? May I Borrow Your Jack? It's a psychological study, how mind is prepared, even before you come to a meeting point, how you are mentally preparing yourself, either positively or negatively. The parties who are literate should be allowed, requested to go through that article before they come to the mediation table. Ladies and gentlemen, the psychological component of the proceedings is, is, the, is the, the, there is no, I, I once had the occasion to say that a trained mediator is the greatest gift of God yet stifled in society. Today, the mediators are, are the only hope for this system which is bogged down in, in a, in a formal way in an in, 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 in inexorable mire of uh, impossibility. The, we have uh, seen cases pending for, for generations. And uh, there's an old curse. There's an old curse in, uh, in, in India that if a man is aggrieved against another, he will say, uh, let there be a let civil litigation in your family where you are right. Let there be a civil litigation in your family where you are right. And that is the kind of, when you are wrong, well, civil litigation may be a pleasant, uh, pleasant way of drawing up, protracting the proceedings against you. But when you are in the right, the civil litigation is, is a, really a curse. 
and that is a road curse in the, in the North India. When a person is, to, is uh, displeased with another, he would say, let there be a civil litigation in your family where you are right. And solution to this, uh, this problem is this beautiful institution of mediation. Our, uh, we have seen extraordinary cases. And in fact, if I, I went through Trivandrum's book, amazing ways in which what we, what we would have otherwise thought impossible and how they were solved is a story, a fairy tale book, which cites instances which are so beautiful and so heartwarming. And ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy to be with you this evening to pay my regards to Justice Sidak Joseph, Varun Kumar, Justice Manur Mahad, Dinesh Kumar, Pratima Murthy, Mohanda Pai, Nait Bachin, and all of you. And in particular to Tirvangaram for the beautiful work he has done. And I must thank once again, Justice Sidak Joseph has been very kind to me. I have enjoyed his uh, friendship and uh, uh, his uh, warmth of his uh, personality is a beautiful human being. And uh, I particularly thank him for pointing out the, the uh, in fact, most of us didn't know the story of one person standing up amongst the, the hundred of the crowd of us and saying, well, that they, what you're doing is wrong. And a hundred others uh, sided with the injustice and the great men, great men, kept silent, worst acts of calumny, as it is said, the worst acts of calumny are done in silence. Worst acts of calumny are done in silence. And this is a beautiful evening. I hope and pray that uh, this book, Making Minds Meet, will inspire people, particularly lawyers and judges. The judges uh, are a great instrument in promoting, uh, a great medium in promoting mediation. When judges request the lawyers on either side, on both sides, to bring about some kind of a peace and settlement, or possibly lawyers will be encouraged to do that. I think judges must uh, open up uh, more and more towards the potential of mediation. And uh, mediation must become the mainstream. And it's only after mediation, unfortunately, fails, then the access to court explore the possibilities of a litigative solution. Thank you very much for your patience and courtesy. I'm most grateful to Justice Sirak Joseph for the beautiful talk that he delivered and told us how, how the hottest place in hell is, is reserved for those who are silent in a moral crisis. Thank you very much for your patience and courtesy. Namaskar. Thank you, sir, for ending this uh, program is a, such a wonderful note. Thank you so much for your insights. And uh, before we have the uh, word of thanks, which is uh, Ramya is going to handle, let me announce uh, the author has already announced the title of his second book, which is in process. I believe it's already gone into editing. The book is going to be called Business Intelligence and Game Theory in Dispute Resolution and negotiation coming soon by BC Thirivangram. Thank you very much. And uh, Ramya is going to take the word of thanks and uh, thank you. I was delighted to present this. Uh, any faux pas, I seek your pardon. Thank you very much, sir. Those with a grateful mindset tend to see messages through conflict and mess. And even though life may knock them down, the grateful are the ones who find reason to get back up. We are so grateful. We are so grateful to have His Lordship, Honorable Mr. Justice M.N. Venkatachalaya present. Thank you so much for your kind words and as well as for penning the foreword. And as His Lordship rightly said, a trained mediator is the greatest gift to society. Thank you, Honorable Mr. Justice Siriyat Joseph, who has joined us from Kerala. 
and who has also highlighted the key aspects of the book and the importance of conflict resolution. Thank you, Honorable Mr. Justice. Thank you, His Lordship Justice Arvind Kumar. Thank you for sharing your experiences about mediation and for being present here today, despite your busy schedule. Thank you, His Lordship Justice Banurma, for your very kind words and for your constant support. We are extremely grateful to have you with us. Thank you, Honorable Justice Dinesh Kumar, who has always been a champion to the cause of mediation and conflict resolution. I'd also like to thank His Lordship Justice Shishananda, His Lordship Justice Prabhakar, His Lordship Justice Prabhakar Shastri, His his Lordship Justice B.A. Patil, His Lordship Justice Amaranava, and all the other judges who have joined both physically and virtually this evening. Thank you, Dr. Professor Pratima Murthy, for your speech and for your lovely review about the book. Thank you, Mr. Mohan Daspai, for being present and for your constant support. Thank you, Dr. Lalit Basin, who has joined us all the way from Delhi and for always being a huge source of support. I'd like to thank all the honorable judges, members of the legal community, our family, our work family, all the senior mediators, Professor Nagbhushan, Prof uh, Mr. Mohan Rangam for being present here and all other lawyers, as well as friends and well-wishers. Thank you for your support. Thank you to senior advocate, Mr. Shankar, for helping us organize today's event without whose support today's event would not have been possible. I have to thank Mr. Tiruvengdam, of course, my father, for penning this book because it is going to be a huge, huge inspiration for many, such as myself, and it sh I'm sure it will be a help to the community. This book would not have seen the light of day without the support of his wife, Mrs. Revdi Thiruvangdu. Thank you, Mr. Anand Krishna, Mr. Brijesh Singh, and Professor Chandrasekhar for taking time off to edit this book. And thank you, Professor Chandrasekhar, for your review as well. Thank you to Mr. Thank you to Mr. Akshay Nayak and Mr. Manik Bhitti for technical support and for Ms. Siri Prasad and Mr. Anand Sagar for graciously accepting to read the excerpt today. And thank you, Mr. Devaka, Ms. Mitra, Rahul, Ramesh, and everyone from the office who's helped out, who's uh, thank you to uh, Ms. Tishta and Ms. Vaidehi and Ms. Mitra and also to Dr. Shripya, Dr. Sharanya Mohan, Ms. Shripya Mohan, Dr. Aditya Armagam, Monica and Baby Vihan. Thank you to everyone at KSCA and Mr. Edward for your support. Apologies for my long <laughs> sense of gratefulness. I'd also like to thank God for giving us the good health and strength to make this evening possible. And thank you all for your patience. Thank you for being with us today. So now we'll be handing over mementos to the dignitaries and to those who have helped us. We have Ms. Revdi Tirwengdam, who's handing over the memento to Honorable Justice Arvind Kumar. Ms. Siri Prasad, who will be handing over the memento to Honorable Justice Banurman. Ms. Sara Sani, who will be handing over the memento to Honorable Mr. Justice Dinesh Kumar. Ms. Shripriya Mohan, who will be handing over the memento to Dr. Pratima Murthy. <laughs> Ms. Monica M., who will be handing over the memento to Mr. Mohan Das Pai. Mr. Karthik Raj Shekhar, who will be handing over the memento to Professor Chandrasekhar. Dr. Aditya Arumugam, who will be handing over the memento 
to Mr. Chandra Mauli, our master of ceremonies this evening. And him and his entire team at Judge Press have been a huge source of support and the reason for the book being printed. Ms. Vaidehi will be handing over the moment to Mr. Anand Krishna. Mr. Anand Krishna. He has helped edit the book as well. Mr. Manoj Kumar will be handing over the memento to Mr. Anand Sagar. Ms. Disha GP will be handing over the memento to Ms. Siri Prasad. and Dr. Sharanya Mohan, who will be handing over the memento to Mr. Brijesh Singh. Yes. Mementos have also been couriered to, our part, uh, to our Honorable Justice Venkatachalaya to Honorable Justice Siriak Joseph and to Dr. Lalit Basin, who have joined us virtually. Thank you once again for your patience and for bearing with me this evening. Thank you, everybody. With that, we end today's evening. We end today's evening with the national anthem. Shana <laughs> Tabashupa, she